welcome to another edition of the Gentleman of Style Show. I'm Baldwin. And I'm Creech. And today we got a great guest in the house, one of our close friends from back in the day, entrepreneur, businessman, <laughs> Mr. Shane Campbell. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, great, great. So Shane, let's jump right in and uh, do something for us. Tell, tell us. Tell us a little bit about your background. Where, where are you from, by the way? Well, I was born and raised in Bladen County, North Carolina. Okay. I grew up, went to Clarkton High School, spent most of my life there. Right. And I uh, came to Greensboro in 1990. Right. And pretty much been here ever since, outside right. of five years out in Arizona. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's about it. Yeah. So, so um, your upbringing, and I'm, I'm from that area, by the way, you know, what? Clarkton is about. 10 minutes from Welch's Creek? Yeah, about 10 about minutes. 10 minutes yeah. from Welch's Creek. I mean, we grew up in a rural area down there is country. Mm -hmm. Down there is cornfields and... The sticks. Sticks. Um, <laughs> you know, we grew up cropping the biker and climbing trees. Yeah. You know, that's that's kind of how it was. You know, no <laughs> pun intended on that and everything. Yeah. So having a, having a rural upbringing like that, has, what type of values had, uh, did that instill in you uh, coming up? Well. Growing up on the farm, man, you know, it's, it's all about hard work, you know, you learn, right. it teaches you the value of what it means to work hard for your money and Absolutely. what it means to work hard. Absolutely. Because, you know, you, everything you get on the farm, you, you, you work for it. You work for it, that's you right. Know, there's nothing handed to you free, mm -hmm. and, um, and those, those are ethics that, that carries with you the whole time, your whole life. You know, you understand what it means to work hard for what you got. Yeah, and you know, I, I've talked to like young kids before. Um, they're in the office, they're working behind a desk, and they're mm -hmm. on the computer, and they're like, and they're like, man, this this is hard work. You know, this is <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, laugh, I laugh too. This is hard work. Yeah. Man, I'm ready to go home, man. Why are they doing this? I say, you do not understand what understand. hard work is. Yeah. You do not understand. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, that's how I talk to people yeah. where I work at. I'll sit behind a desk now, with my job, and. You know, they same complaint on my artists and hard work. It's like, you don't understand what hard work yeah, you is. You don't get it. Yeah. You don't, until, you, <laughs> until you've been in the tobacco field and sand lugging, walking behind that drag, which mm -hmm. is a trailer, by the way, if you don't yeah. know that terminology. Mm -hmm. And it's what, 103 degrees outside, yeah. and there's morning glories and snakes and spiders, <laughs> snakes and spiders. out there, and you in the dew. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you don't know. You don't understand. You don't get it. When you cropping a drag roll and a dag roll. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Shoot. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all yeah, can Google that if you don't understand. <laughs> what is one of the things, you know, being on the farm, when you're on the farm, you learn, of course, how to work hard. <coughs> but what else do you take from that? Like, like being on the farm and understanding how things work, the process of making things work. What, what, what was that like for you, like learning that process at a young age? Well, it was all about learning the process. You know, the everything is done for a reason. It, you know, your parents, they show you, especially, you know, on the farm, your parents show you how to do things. Like like you said, you know, working in that tobacco field. This is how you do it. And then you just, it's like, it's like having a template for anything that you do. Right. Um, you just follow the template. You know, you don't veer too far off of that template. Right. You know, but outside of that, man, the... You know, it's just what my father instilled in me, you know, everything you work for, anything, nothing is going to be handed to you. Mm -hmm. If it's free, it may not be worth it if it's free. Right. You know, so anything that you work for hard for, you know, you earned it. Right, correct. You know, so it's all about the work ethic, man. It's, you know, that's the problem with a lot of the generations today. They don't have any work ethic. All they know is a uh, PlayStation. That's what they know, you know. Sit in the house, you know. We grew up where we grew up at. We you, you don't sit in the house. Yeah, you get, you get your house. behind out of bed, you know, six o'clock in the morning. You eat your breakfast. You're out of the house. You're out of the house. And you're not right. coming back all in the day. house all, all day. day long. All day. There's daylight when you leave out, and then there's dark, dark when you go when you back, back in the house. That's so. correct. But you know that again, there, you you don't appreciate it when you're young. You're out there working and sweating in it, but you appreciate it when you're grown and you're own. You got to take care of your own. Correct. So. That's where that work ethic comes from, man. So. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so let's get into. Um, you may see the sauce in front of us here. Um, how? How? Let, let's talk about your company first, mm -hmm. okay? You 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 formed a company. How long ago did you form this company? Well, the Twisted Pig Sauce. We came. We formed this about. It's probably been about four years. Four years. We came up with the concept when we was living in Arizona, mm -hmm. and uh, we. 
we kept testing it. Well, it was really, my wife, mm -hmm. she came up with the concept with the original. Mm -hmm. um, now, now, was just, now, was that in conjunction while you were doing the catering business? Y'all started to create this, or did that come like we were making after, our, after? We were making our own sauce, uh -huh. um, so to speak, just to have something that would be different. Because, I mean, you can go to a grocery store, you can go to a dollar store, man. You can, you know, you can spend a dollar and get a bottle of a barbecue sauce, but it's not going to be what you would expect. It's going to be the same thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, when we came up with this, it was all about having a wow factor. Mm -hmm. Each time you try this product, it's wow. Man, this, ta this tastes great. Mm -hmm. There's no different when I'm making that sauce. I, I test it every time I make it. I, I test it. I will not put it in a bottle until I test it. Right. And every time I test it, it's wow. That's that wow factor. This is great. Well, outside of the hot one, I, the hot one's a little too hot for my taste. Right, right, right. I know if the Caribbean and the original is right, I know the hot one is right. So, right, right. You know, so like I said, it was about four and a half years, and then when we moved back to uh, Greensboro, it was like we didn't get back into the catering business. So it was like, let's make a run of. We did our research on it to see how we could go about getting bottles, doing our own packaging, getting the labels and everything. So. Then we put it together. Right. We did a couple of uh, vendor shows at um, did some at the church. A uh, vendor show at the church um, where my wife works at. Um, they have a huge vendor show where they have vendors come in, and um, that was the first major one. I guess you could call it a major one that we did. So we went in there. I sent it there with about forty bottles, and at that time we only had two flavors: the original and the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Well, we ended up the the show lasted for about three hours, but she sold out. In like 30 minutes. Wow. You know, we sold wow. 50 bottles in That's like impressive. 30 minutes. That's impressive. You know, because when we set up, you know, we, we, we want you to test the product. It's not just, okay, okay, I'm not going to try it just because it's in the bottle. Right. That don't mean it's going to taste good. So mm -hmm. when you come, when our shows, you get to try the product. You know, and that's, you know, 30 minutes, 40 bottles she sold out. So we couldn't be there. So I thought, my thought process was, so the next time we want to have more. Right. We're gonna have more than so that way we can't sell out, or if we do sell out, if you sell three, four hundred bottles in the show, mm -hmm. that's a good thing. Yeah, you know, most definitely. Well, how'd you come up with the name Twisted Pig? Um, right off the top of my head, man, I was like, I wanted to have something that you know stands out. You know, don't look the same as everybody because again, it's about brand. If your brand is right, you know, it's going to get you to thinking, why that's Twisted Pig? You know, a lot of folks are like, oh, 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 you sell, you have a barbecue restaurant. You sell, you, what do you sell, pulled pork, right. sell rib? No, that, that's not what we do. Right. That's the, that was the thought process to get you to say, what is Twisted Pig? <coughs> So, it's Twisted Pig, Twisted Sauce. Is that the total? Now it's Twisted it? Pig, Twisted Sauce. Okay. When, when we originally started the catering business, mm -hmm. we were Twisted Pig. Right. And then when we came up with the sauce, we did our research. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a there's a gentleman in uh, Virginia. Um, he has his own restaurant. It's called the Twisted Pig. So mm -hmm. we, we talked to the attorneys about what well, can we do. And it was like just change the name up a little bit. So adding Twisted Pig, um, adding Twisted Sauce oh, to it. Different now it's Twisted Pig, Twisted Sauce. Right, right. So I can operate under that without getting sued or anything like right, that. So, right, gotcha. <laughs> so how did you come up with your blend? Was there what what went into making the blend itself for for each flavor? A lot of tasting. Hmm. A lot of tasting this, trying this, cutting it with this, cutting it with that, making sure the measurements were right, what because it has to be specific, because we didn't want one thing to overpower another thing. So You're a scientist. I guess you could call it that. <laughs> He's in the lab. He's in the lab working. Yeah, yeah when we're working, man. That's the reason why we would not put it out there. When we put the original out, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, okay, we can run with the original for a while. And then, you know, once we, you know, I got to thinking about it, it was, okay, let's, let's go a little different now. Let's try something different. Right. So I came up with the uh, Caribbean blend, you mm -hmm. know, and the Caribbean blend, it ended up being uh, the number one seller. And then, um, uh, I was like, okay, let's see about, let's see if we can add another one because we started getting a lot of folks asking, I want hot. What you got that's hot? I like right, something right. that's hot. Okay, mm -hmm. so you want something hot? We're going to give you something hot then. Mm -hmm. So that's when we came up with a twisted fire sauce um, mm -hmm. that has the ghost pepper in it. Right. So, and it was like, well, we'll Oh, so try that's, it. that's, that's what gives it that heat like. That's where the, the heat comes from, is that ghost pepper. Yeah. You know, that there, mm -hmm. that ghost pepper, man, it, it has four teaspoons. That's all you can put in one batch because mm -hmm. it's so it can't be overpowering. Right. Mm -hmm. And we wanted it to we didn't want to burn your tongue out of your right. mouth, so to speak. <laughs> we wanted you to have that taste as you know, if you had when you eat it, 
you got that good sweet taste and you got the, the actual blends you can taste them spices but then you're gonna get that burn on the back end. That's when that heat comes in. Okay, okay so you methodically like measure this. That's the out way we wanted it. Per volume of what mm -hmm. you need to do, you know yeah. exactly. Okay, mm -hmm. you have a process. Now. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Great, that's enough. Yeah. So and again, there is all about the wow factor. Every mm -hmm. time you try this sauce, it's like this is great. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's we've been rolling ever since, man. So uh, we decided to uh, turn the company into an LLC. Right. You know, so and now the Twisted Pig is going to be a DBA under our company name, which is S and M Enterprises. So okay. for people who don't know what an LLC is, I don't like them. That's what I showed up. You try to enlighten mm -hmm. like people that don't. Well, the, the LLC um, the difference it keeps you from being like if you heaven forbid if you get sued, you you know you want to be able to separate business from personal assets. That's right. So that's the reason why we were advised, you know, put your company on the LLC. So that way, at any given time, you know, you know, if something happens, you know, if you get, you know, it happens to get sued or, you know, then, you know, nobody can touch your personal assets. Right. The only, only thing they can touch is the business side. Right. So that's the reason why we came up with that because we don't want the personal assets touched. Anybody right. wants your personal Absolutely. assets touched because if you get sued, they can take all your personal assets from you and right. they can take anything they want from your business. Yeah, you need a, you had a business mm -hmm. lined up correctly. Yeah. And everything. Mm -hmm. yep. Exactly. Exactly. It's good it was good to how to get an attorney, get an mm -hmm. attorney's advice and that's that's the reason we came up with that L L C on there. So and that's that's where we're gonna roll. Come January, we are gonna be S and M Enterprises L L C mm -hmm. and uh, the Twisted Pig is gonna be a DBA under on a, yeah, on the S and M. So it gives you an op gives us an opportunity not just to own one business, you but to venture into other, other, other businesses. Business. Correct. Exactly, because Correct. eventually, what's going to happen um, if everything works out? What will happen with the Twisted Pig brand? We're going to control everything: bottling, packaging, shipping, and everything. Be all of everything is cutting out the middleman. Right. Because if you notice on the bottle, it has a on the label, it has handmade on there. Mm -hmm. If I take if I give it to um, what what's called a private label, mm -hmm. I have to pull that off of there because at that point it's not handmade anymore. Right. Because okay. I do everything. I do the bottle, the ma I make the product, I bottle it, I package it, mm -hmm. I do all the shipping. So it's considered handmade. And it's like when we do shows, they ask you before, you know, when you register to do these shows, is your product handmade mm -hmm. or is it um, um, what you call private label? Mm -hmm. And privately, that's the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. So we have to, by controlling everything, I can leave that on that bottle handmade on there. So, and then controlling everything. I don't want a middleman. I want to be able to control everything, marketing, packaging, and everything. Now you have a you have a partner that um, that um, works with you on this, mm -hmm. and um, they are substantial. In your organization. Oh yeah. Let's mm -hmm. talk about your partner for a second, since they couldn't join us today. Yeah, that's my beautiful wife, Monet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's the brains behind the operation. Um, I handle most of the marketing, but she, thank God for her, she came up with the design, with mm -hmm. the idea, mm -hmm. and I was like, well, let's roll with it. Why not get paid off this? Make let's make some money. She's <laughs> in New York right now. Um, we've been together 16 years, married okay. 15 years, 14 years, excuse me. Um, she's truly the brains behind the operation. She came up with the concept, mm -hmm. and I took it and ran with it. Was, Let's run with it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of so. It's usually women that are brains behind. Oh yeah, yeah, behind. man. <laughs> you know, behind like I, you know, I, I believe you know behind every man there, there should be a yeah. good a good woman. Absolutely. Man. Absolutely. And, you know, and it's for me. You know, my whole philosophy is a happy wife is a happy life. Absolutely. You know, and she keeps me motivated. And I, I do my very best to keep her motivated, but mm -hmm. um, so there's no negativity around here. Right. You know, we don't like to be involved with anybody that uh, that will uh, be negative, mm -hmm. because again, this is a business we're trying to get off of the ground, and um, if it's the Lord's will, we will expand this business as far as we possibly can. But again, she is the brains behind this operation. Uh, I guess you could say that she's on. She handles the white collar side. I handle the blue collar side. Right, right. But we're both involved in the marketing aspect because of my background in sales and consulting. So I handle that part. She basically handles the money. Right. On there. But right. If it weren't for her, this probably wouldn't exist the way it is right now. Right. You know. So I thank God for. Her. 
So, so just tell tell us a little bit about um, you know the, the the aspirations moving forward. Like, what are your ultimate goals, uh, and where would you like to see this go? Let's say, like, in five years. Five years from now, um, as I stated before, we want to control all, every aspect right. of it. You know. Um, we are going to be in the process of finding a building mm -hmm. where we can set up shop. So five years from now, man, we, I expect my my goal five years from now actually is to be in that building. I already have trucks on the road running, mm -hmm. delivering. You know, because again, we're gonna we want to control everything, bottling, packaging, distributing, and every aspect of it. Because again, it is a handmade product. Because if I send it to a private label, then I have to pull handmade off of it. Right. So it's all, it's basically like once you go into that grocery store, everything or a convenience store, where what have you, when you look at every barbecue sauce that you see up there, it's going to look the same. There's nothing handmade. It's all private label. Everything right. that you see in the store is private label. Right. Most of your handmade product, you have to go to like your fresh market mm -hmm. or you know um, like the farmers market to see handmade products. Mm -hmm. You know. So that is the it's the idea of being able to stand out uh, wherever your product is at, and that's the goal. You know? Outstanding. Are there any future plans to move into something different besides just the sauce? Like, do you guys want to do anything with you know maybe opening a restaurant, but anything you know something else you want to venture into? Yeah, well the 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 main goal is to <clears throat> have a, a restaurant. So we're kind of deviating between having a standalone spot or, or being mobile, having a food truck. Right. You know, the original goal when we That'd started cool. the when we started the um, the catering business, and then obviously we shut it down because we moved to Arizona. Right. But while we was in Arizona, the biggest thing out there on the West Coast, man, was food trucks. Right. And it was booming out there. We did the research on that, and um, it, it's just recently the past few years has gotten popular here on the East Coast. Right. So if I, we thought about it, we kind of kicked ourselves in the butt while we were there. It was like, we should have jumped in it on the ground floor. Right. Because it's so, it's so, it's starting to get so popular now. But, you know, the it, it, it comes out to be a little cheaper on it, running the food truck versus having a standalone spot. Yeah, I can see that. Because you can control a lot more of your labor costs right. mm -hmm. with the food truck because, you know, you keep those costs down because you don't have to have a, a large uh, group of employees, basically. Right. Whereas that standalone spot, there's so much, so many other things you have to control. Right. So it's all about, for me, man, it's controlling all the costs. You know, keeping that labor cost, labor cost down, keeping your yeah. inventory costs down. You, you said something so yeah. important: controlling costs and keeping mm -hmm. um, 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 labor down, any type of overhead. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, people want to jump into things and they want to spend all types yeah. of money and everything. Mm -hmm. You can do that. You have the, I guess, if you had a financial backing, <laughs> yeah, burn, exactly. Yeah. You know, on that. <laughs> but you know, when you when you're starting a company, you're starting um, um, a business, mm -hmm. it, it, keeping keeping the money in line mm -hmm. and figuring out how to do things efficiently I think is the overall um, advantage of the longevity of, uh, of operation if you want right. to conduct it in that way because mm -hmm. you, you, you learn things anybody can throw money at something oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know but to figure out how to do something you know, um, um, uh, on the back side of that mm -hmm. you know putting some knowledge and some ingenuity behind it I think that's where you win yeah, exactly, exactly that's where you win so, that was the main thing there because, you know, I learned a lot um, over the past year and a half. Um, it takes a lot to run a business. It does. Absolutely. Because it does. there's so many avenues that you got to cover. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, you'll lose money. Uh, when we first started, we lost money. Absolutely. You know, it Absolutely. was like, and it took us a while to figure out mm -hmm. where those costs, where we were losing money at. And right. once you figure it out, you still have to stay on top of it. Yeah, you lose money trying to be, get established. Exactly. Get your name out there. Exactly. And you you burn in costs then. You mm -hmm. may never recoup that cost. Exactly. Maybe at some point, but, you know, I think um, realistically, you know, that's yeah. just money. That's just an investment you mm -hmm. have to make in order to, yeah. you know, move forward and get into the game mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. On that note, Tech, is, is there any um, words that you could share? with um, young people, um, people that are starting out, um, people that are older and they're wishing to get into the entrepreneurial business and mm -hmm. get things started. Or do you have any words for those guys as far as, um, to sh just share your wisdom with them as far as what you think they should do? My biggest thing is, is do not give up. Because the right. minute you let 
doubt will start to set in, you know, because you a lot of folks when they get in they expect the they expect a large return mm -hmm. on the forefront. Mm -hmm. You can't get have that uh, mindset. So when you go into business for yourself, you got to understand that you may be broke for a while. <laughs> You're gonna be broke for a while. So you still gotta eat, so you gotta make sure that you're feeding your family right. until you get that business up and running. But the main thing is, is never give up because once you give up, that doubt sets in mm -hmm. and then you're gonna get lackadaisical about which next, what's the next step gonna be. Right. And um, and it's all about being positive and, right. and having positive people around you, getting rid of anything that's negative. Right. If it's not gonna make sense <laughs> In regards to running that business, you need to get rid of it. Yeah, and I think that's so you important. Um, people, they they have certain people around them. You know, before you start doing your own thing, you consider mm -hmm. them um, a friend, a confidant, or whatnot. Yeah. But then, you know, when you start, ex to me, when you start trying to do something, that's that's to me that's excelling. Exactly. That's something. Mm -hmm. Then the negativity yeah. comes in. Mm -hmm. Oh well. Uh, you're not gonna be able to do that because you know you're gonna run into this or what exactly, that and you know. everything. But they're talking to you from a standpoint of no experience. Exactly. In exactly. That, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're not talking to me from a point to where mm -hmm. you've done it and you're sharing something that you've already done. Exactly. And, you, you know. know. So yeah, getting Look, the, getting those people out, exactly, <laughs> out of your man. life. You know, it's Ooh, like the old saying. You know, mm -hmm. I know, in, especially in the black community, man. You know, you always hear the old, the thing, the crabs in the barrel. Crabs in the barrel. That's Get it. rid of the crabs in the barrel, man. You know, if you're not willing to uplift your brother or your sister that's Absolutely. trying to advance, then leave them alone. Leave them alone. Right. If you're not wanting Absolutely. to be involved with creating something that's going to create a future for somebody, mm -hmm. see, the goal is is not. I'm not just in it. Obviously, we in it to make a profit. Right. But the goal is. These days, man, they, these people just hurting for jobs. So I want to be a, have an opportunity mm -hmm. to extend employment to other people, so they can uh, have something to build off of, mm -hmm. creating jobs in the in the community, mm -hmm. keeping that money in the in our community. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the only way you're gonna survive, man. You can't work for everybody the rest of your life, especially if you're trying if you want to have something. Right. You gotta create your own. You right. gotta create your own, man. Yeah, that, that's the important. only way, you know. Uh, my father-in-law, um, that's one of the things he taught me, um, he's in New York, um, his, his father passed away, you know, so just send a shout out to him, but, mm -hmm. you know, he gave me, he told, he gave me a lot of ideas mm -hmm. about running a business, it was like, get people involved that's going to be positive, that wants to do something with it, if they're not willing to, you know, do what you're wanting to do with the business, let them go, get rid of them. You don't want nobody involved that's not on, on board to make money. Right. You know, and understand it takes hard, it's hard work. Right. You know, that's one of the things I had to, you know, when my wife, when we got involved with it, you know, I have a background in the food industry. And it's like, when you get involved with the food industry, you have to have a work ethic. Right. Because if you don't, you, you won't survive. Right. They'll eat you <laughs> it alive. It will eat you up, man. It will eat you know, alive, pun intended. Yeah. It, <laughs> yes. it, it takes, sometimes, man, it'll take 100 hours a week. When you're running your own, but you know the thing about running your own business, man. You know, I, I truly believe that they say when you you don't go to work, you what you're doing, you enjoy what you're doing. You, right. And when you enjoy what you're doing, you never work a day in your life. Not work. It's not work. How is it working side by side? <coughs> we all know that being in relationships, being married, those types of things, you know, different stresses in general. Mm -hmm. But trying to create a new business with your wife, mm -hmm. how does that relationship work? You got to be on the same page, definitely. And I'd say the main thing is keep God in your life, man. You keep God first. Keep God first and just stay on page with one another. And, not, and let your woman be in charge. <laughs> <laughs> let Words your woman, of wisdom. Let your, woman, let your woman, woman be in charge, man. Because, again, you know, if, if y'all on page together, there's a lot of things you can do. <laughs> You know, I don't. A lot of times, you don't want to. You know, I've always heard, never go in business with a friend, never go in business with a family member. Uh, sure. But if you're on the same page you and you have the same page. ideas and the same goals in That's mind, correct. there's nothing wrong with that. That is correct. You know? That is correct. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, 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 I mean, that's that's words of wisdom. That's mm -hmm. words of wisdom right there. Yes, sir. And you know, um, come from where we come from. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, trying trying to you know find that light person that has that, that has the light ideologies mm -hmm. that you are. It's a rare it's a rare thing, 
And once you find that person, mm -hmm. or even that group of people, that's something you have to latch on to and you have to hold on to that. Right, um, right. You know, I, I would say forever. Mm -hmm. I would say forever. Right. And the other thing that's on top of that, and I don't discount other people that have ideals, mm -hmm. because I think, I believe that you can learn anything yeah, from yeah. anyone, mm -hmm. you know, so. I mean, the more the more the merrier. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, you know, I, I've I've um, I've dealt with like some um, executives, and uh, it was on one particular occasion. And one executive told me, he said, Ron, he said, I can't have enough information. I cannot have enough information. Mm -hmm. And that kind of resonated with me, as far as when you're trying to do something, you understand it to the fullest degree, mm -hmm. to the fullest degree. Once you understand something to the fullest degree, take one more step and everything and try to understand some right, more. Right. Yep. That's the only way you're going to progress. You're going to get better and you're going to be able to articulate and move things around and you know put things where they need to be in order for it to make the business work exactly, yeah. on that. And I think you're embodying that mm -hmm. if, uh, from what you're doing. You're handling it oh, yes, perfectly. Mm -hmm. perfectly. You're meeting the people. You're forming the correct partnerships mm -hmm. in order to get that done. You're, 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 you're taking ownership in what you're doing and you're taking on those tasks in yourself mm -hmm. in order to make it happen. Yes, sir. And I think this is something that we uh, need to instill mm -hmm. as far as what you need to do in order to get it. Don't sit around and expect someone else to do it. Mm -hmm. You take ownership of that take situation yeah. and you move it yeah. and you do it. That's it, man. You do it. No different, no different than like you know, mm -hmm. growing up on again, you know, harking back to growing up on the farm. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you go to your father to ask him. You know, just I can, you know, like when I first got my first car. Mm -hmm. You know, when that oil change needed to be done in that car. You get up in the You know, you go ask pops and dad, I need to get my oil change. And he's <clears> like, Well, I'm not gonna help you change it. I'm gonna take you out here. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Then you can do it yourself. That's right. That's called, like you said, taking ownership. Take ownership of mm -hmm. it. Yeah, nothing is going to get done that you want to get done unless you do it right. yourself. Exactly. You know, so. Exactly. And, and to be honest with you, when you handle things yourself, you feel more you know, comfortable about it. More comfortable. That, that the job got done right because yeah. I, you know, I mm -hmm. did it. Yes, I, don't sure. have to, I don't have to like wonder about it. Mm -hmm. I don't have to wonder if Johnny uh, did it correct way. He put slot A and slot B like he was yep. supposed to. Mm -hmm. I handled it. Yes, sir. I know. So you use a lot of your life lessons from you know being back home now to this day. Mm -hmm. What's one of the biggest lessons you try to instill, other than I know working hard, but what are some of the bigger lessons you try to instill in your kids with the, the new millennials and everybody seems to want things like right now. What is it that you're trying to tell your kids like now that, that says, okay, I know the way I grew up is totally different than the way the world is now, mm -hmm. but you're going to need this. What what piece do you always say <clears throat> you need this? Well, today, man, it's this generation. It's you have to educate yourself. You know, you know, our generation when we came along, there was plenty of jobs out here. Mm -hmm. It was not. It was easy to find a job today. Now, if you're not educated, it's very hard to find a professional job. You know, it's easy to you know go work at a, work in a warehouse or anything like that, but this generation today, they've gotten so lazy, so to speak, that you put yourself in a position where you have to educate yourself. Right. And if you don't, you will be left by the wayside. But but at, but there again, you know, when I went to college, you know, yeah, I didn't graduate. But my whole thing, somebody told me a long time ago, uh, the purpose of going to college is to find out what you want to do with your life. It don't mean you necessarily necessarily going to graduate. Right. It's not you're not going to graduate. You're going to find out what you're going to do with your life. And for a lot of us. Um, it probably doesn't transpire that way. Um, that's the reason why so many folks have graduated and gotten their degrees where mine stopped. But a light bulb went off in my head one day. It's like, I want to be a business owner. Now I know what I want to do. What's the, way, what's the need of me having to have this degree when I already know what it takes? And I've done the research, done the reading, know what it takes um, so I can implement what I'm doing without having to have that degree. I don't have I'm because I want to be my own boss. I don't I didn't have to have that degree to learn how to be my own boss. You know, it's interesting mm -hmm. because, you know, with the exposure that the internet has given us mm -hmm. in today's world, that type of power was not, you know, available in that. the past. Yeah. You can you can basically learn almost anything. <laughs> Go on the internet and anything. Days, man. Yeah. And get it started. Mm -hmm. And get it started and handled it. 
And networking, man. And network. That's the Very problem. Powerful. That's the problem with the generation today. They don't network. Well, Terrence had it. You know? He talked about that extensively in mm -hmm. one of our um, 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 our videos, yeah. one of our shows, mm -hmm. and everything. How young people don't know how to talk to other people. Don't know how to talk. They don't know how to talk. Yeah, did they did you put that in the video? Or was that like something a conversation? Yeah, it was a conversation, but mm -hmm. it's a it's a reality that <coughs> the generation now there's no personal communication. Right. It's only digital electronic communication. So I can text you all day, mm -hmm. but I can sit down at the table and just look at you because I don't know how to have a good conversation right. with you. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to approach you or have a conversation whereas we're, we're, we're networking about something. I may want the same things that you want, mm -hmm. but I can't articulate it to you unless I text you. Exactly. And yeah. so it's a real, it's, it, it's a real, it's a head scratcher to me, but for them it's not because this is what they grew up in. Mm -hmm. Our communication back in the day was, it consisted of a telephone yeah. that was either on a wall or on a table. And you didn't get a chance to stay on the phone for five or six <laughs> right. hours. You sure did not. You, 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 you could get on the phone, you make your phone call, you call, you know, say what you got to say. Mom comes through, you still on that phone? Yes, yeah, get off that phone. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I have to call you back. Mm -hmm. But Seriously. now everybody has a phone. Mm -hmm. Everybody has access to pretty much anything that they need. Yeah. But it's instead of it, some of it is progressing us, but some of the you know some of it is holding us back. Yeah, exactly. Because without that personal communication, the world doesn't advance the way it's supposed mm -hmm. to. Right. Technology can. Yeah. But we as people don't. Yeah, it's just like <coughs> just like a gentleman um, from my, on the job where I work at. I was speaking with a gentleman uh, from New York, a business owner in New York. And uh, we was talking about communications, you know, the way things are set up this day. And he, he, made, he had a valid point. It was like, we're living in a time now where we have a generation of folks that's, that's lost in the electronic world. Yes. They absolutely. don't know how to survive. Don't know, don't, you have a generation of people now, man, that don't even know how to write a check. That you have a generation that, don't, that does not know how to write a check. Mm -hmm. So if you take away all of the electronics that we have, what are you going to do? You're lost. You're lost. You wouldn't know. You won't know how to do. It. You wouldn't know how to feed yourself. It's the same thing. You know? um, um, like those basic skills, like where we came from, mm -hmm. about being yeah. able to go out in the garden and know how to put a plant in the ground and things mm -hmm. like that, or harvest what you got, uh, what you have, mm -hmm. or that working that we do, um, that we've done in the past, and everything yeah. like that. They're not exposed to those type of things mm -hmm. and everything. So if to, to, if if there was an electronic pulse that happened to shut down all the electronics and you know, all the devices and everything yeah. in the world, which is a, a real thing. It's a real thing. These what days happens days. then? Mm -hmm. how, do, how do they survive then? Yeah. What happens? They and then that's you. where? They come to me. They come to you. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I've been putting together survival skills and everything. I'm yeah. not going to be left out. That's where, where, get that's where get the get. Get. That's where that advantage, <laughs> the advantage that we had growing up, that's where those skills we learned right. will kick in. Exactly. All your folks that live in the big cities mm -hmm. that's never been on a farm or don't know why it is to work hard or you know how to how to grow something or how to know what to eat. I mean, it's even down to the point to where as we could, you know, you're doing something around your house, and everybody eventually is going to gravitate to the point to where they're going to own something and everything. Yeah. But what if you're in a situation where you don't have anybody, uh, 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 a specialist or a professional to come in and help you fix something? Mm -hmm. The way we grew up. We able to if we don't have the proper tools, we're probably able to we're able to like find things around yeah. and create a tool exactly. in order to perform done that it. task. Done it. Been you know, fishing. Done, done. Been fishing without a without a fishing pole. <laughs> yeah. Cut a limb out of the tree, put a notch on the end of it, and tie a string. Tie a thing around the Made it. fish. It's many yeah, times yeah. I've been out there and I've salvaged something. I saw something I was trying to fix like perfect example. My my pump on my pool died. Mm -hmm. And I was out there and I was like, hey, what's going on with this? Call repairman. Call two. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to get an estimate. Have them come one to come over and give me an estimate to fix it and everything. I don't know anything about pool pumps yeah. or anything like that. Neither one of them fools showed up. <laughs> Neither one. So I waited a couple more days. You know, I'm getting a chance to see if they were going to call me and say, oh, we're going to schedule in. Yeah. Nothing. So I got to the point, I'm like, okay, let me go out here. Got my tools, went out there, took that thing apart, <laughs> looked at it, found an old one that was broke. Shoot. Took it apart, go. salvaged the parts from that, put the thing back together, slapped them there over. Go. Working. Mm -hmm. Working. Yep. All it took me was a little bit of time and understanding, hey, there's more way to skin a cat. There's more than one way. way, that's it, there's more man. Than one way to skin and that's the reason why you have a generation yeah. of data, they lost. Mm -hmm. All they, they know is PlayStation. Know. That's all they know. That's PlayStation it. and phone. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Not downgrading them because they have their own skills exactly. and things to offer. Yeah. 
But we we also think, and I think we share this um, um, ideology. We agree that you know there's something to be um, had by um, knowing something above and beyond mm -hmm. you know what's given to you easily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on that, yes, sir. Shane, it's been a pleasure. Oh yes, yeah, it's right. been a pleasure uh, speaking with you today. Uh, it's been a pleasure consuming the sauce. <laughs> that twisted pig is delicious. Trust me, it's delicious. A unique and great tasting experience. A unique and great tasting experience. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We've been there. So, once again, thank you for joining us. And as our motto always say, there's no excuse for good taste. No pun intended. <laughs> I'm Baldwin. And I'm Creech. We'll check you out next time on the Gentleman Style Show. Oh, by the way, Make sure you go out, get a little bit of this sauce. We'll let you know where you can get it from. All right? Absolutely. Once again, Ball with Creech, we're back at you. We got the Twisted Pig over here, which is Creech. Yeah, I'm. I'm and then you got your pretty boy over here, which is Brown L. Baldwin. You know what I mean? I, I, I want to be a rapper. <laughs> I want to be a rapper now. That's my new thing. I'm a rapper. I told you, stick to R&B, no, man. Stick to R&B. No, man. I don't want to sing no more. I don't want to sing no more. Terrible, man. I don't want to sing no more. I want to be a rapper. I'm, I'm, I'm the Twisted Pig, dog. But that—that yeah. that is the name of the song. That was, a, that was a third member of Jodeci. Wait yeah. a minute. Did no. they have like four people in this one? Yeah. So I'm yeah, gonna they have, they have four. It was yeah. five of them. No, it was four. It was four of them. Okay. I'm gonna need you to get up on your your R&B history. Make well, sure you you cook. Well, I wasn't the one that murdered B. First of all, that is none of his business. But we're gonna move on. <laughs> That's the story you told me. <laughs> I, I, look, I'm not saying that it's not true. And it was not Jodeci, it was just two of the members. Y'all know who they are, but anyway. You just want to tell everybody. Yeah, I'm going to tell them. I'm telling them. We'll cut that out him. later. <laughs> you didn't hear that from me. Don't send me no paperwork. Send him that paperwork. But anyway. Anyway. Um, yeah, the sauce is the Twisted Pig uh, by our boy Shane Campbell. Yep, Shane Campbell. Uh, straight out of Bladenboro. That's Bladenboro. Shane from Bladenboro. Yeah. You can talk because we can cut. We can edit it out. Clark. Clark. Straight out of Clark. Shay Campbell out of Twisted Clark in North Carolina. Out of Twisted Clark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. no, no, in really. In case y'all don't know, we, we, we've got some guests. You know how we do. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. They're here in the background. You know, we can't eat this food by ourselves. You know, we, we need a nice Matter spread fact, for the comparison. We got one of our gentlemen style of the weeks. One of our one of our most popular. Oh, man, Mr. Elder Foxworth. It's in the house. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we got our resident genius extraordinaire. Which yeah. has been gracious enough to let us use his facilities. Yeah, we done bombarded Kevin C. Simpson. Bombarded his house. <laughs> bombarded his house. Bombarded it. Took over. Grill. Got the dog laying on the floor back there. He hungry. Look at him. Licking his mouth. But you know, Kings, maybe he'll get a little bit later. Kings is on relaxed mode. But anyway, let's go and get this thing done. All, All right. right. Um, so that's the. Um, we got our original here. Got our original over here. We got a hot here. Hot. Well, fire. It's called fire. I'm sorry. And we have the Twisted Caribbean, Caribbean. here on this side. Yeah. So, the guys, we're just going to jump in here and um, we're going to take a piece of, of each and we're going to sample it. That's you guys. We're going to grab a plate. Come Let's on over. Let's do this. Where, where are those plates at, Steve? Eat a cabinet. This cabinet? Other end. Other end. Down my way. Oh, that end. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, oh, two paper plates, two, two cabinets over. Okay, okay, this one. No, no, two cabinets over. Two, one more. <laughs> I'm sorry, one more. Yeah, no, not that one. That one. One more. Yeah, right there. This one, where you right there? Yeah. Yeah, over right here. You said paper plates, right? Open the other side, now. Nah. Yeah. These, right? You're missing a cabinet. I'm missing a cabinet. Over oh, one more door. Look down, look down. Look down. Yeah. Well, oh, we can just use that, man. We can just use that. Use the paper plate. You want to use the paper plate? No, no, paper plates. Okay. After the washing machine. All right. All right. He said that you like 15 times. Three. That's four. Got to get a big one here. Even it up. Okay. Go on over, guys. Let's take my a sample here. My coach, he, he, he really follows the rest. He always goes rogue. What the rest? I'm going to roll every chance I get. Every chance I get. So we grab these with our hands. We don't, I don't care. Uh, we got a fork. Yeah, I got some tongs for you. Okay. All right. 
I can definitely say you guys got it looking really good, brother. Now that I guess go first. Yeah, we'll try this twisted piece. Try to stay out of the camera, man. Why are you trying to hide? So I'm not a hot guy, so which one is hot? Okay, this was this is the hot right here. The middle is hot, so you got your Caribbean and original right there. So we have the original and we have the Caribbean here. You want to try that one? Try the Caribbean. You don't want to sample each? Yeah, I'll try to hide. Okay. And go ahead and dig in there. All right, and go ahead, Fox. Go ahead, grab one. These are beef Two ribs. Yeah, yeah, beef ribs, and um, this is Caribbean, chicken. huh? That's the Caribbean. Got a nice accent going on. Caribbean, there. man. I wish I could get my accent like that. You know, That's I can't good. do that, man. Original, right there. Original. Mm-hmm. And uh, hot. Yes, yep. that's the hot. One sample of hot. All right, all right, all right. Yes, yes. Looking Caribbean. forward to this. This is what I'm talking all about. Right. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Y'all still gotta be on camera when we do this. You gotta let the devil legs out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta. You know what? You can you can be down there. I'm gonna move the camera. I'll, I'll shift it around. Yeah, shift the camera. All right, right. I'll shift it. Let's bring them to you. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You right there in the camera. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am uh, I'm the guest on uh, Baldwin and Crease today. We're just gonna give this uh, a little. twisted pig sauce uh, a try here. Um, I'm not gonna stack it up against any other sauce because I'm quite certain that. Mr. Shane Campbell is uh, pretty much true to his game when it comes to barbecue sauce. So here we go. First bite. In case you didn't know, uh, Kelvin is a professional at this. Which one is that? That's the hot. You can tell? Yeah, right it's away. hot and the, mm, so, it has a sweet heat to it. So it's nothing like a, a ghost pepper sauce. It's like a habanero barbecue and it's a great mix. So. I need to get in on this. The heat. Oh, you, you stay right there. You stay there. Oh, you fine. You fine. Boss, come on in. Well, let me step in here. Come on you know, in. And I want to give props to Mr. Shane Campbell as well. Uh, one of our homeboys that, that you know, he's, he's the sauce man. I'm going to go ahead and go and get this rib. Go ahead. And since it's a mild sauce, I'm going to go ahead and give you a bite of it. Mm mm mm. That's good. And this actually, thing here. actually too far back. It's mild, it's sweet, my goodness, it's good. That's all I can say. <laughs> my goodness, this is something special. That's the correct, which, which one is that? Mild sauce. The mild sauce? Mm-hmm. So okay. This is the original. All right, so you did all three? All right, it's my turn. So this is the Caribbean. I'll try, try it out here, let's try it, let's see what we got. Mm. Yeah, kind of sweet. It's got a slight spicy taste. It's not overwhelming or anything like that. It's just slightly spicy. And that's the Caribbean. And that, it says, yeah, that's the Caribbean. Mm. Well, that's the Caribbean. This one should be the spicy. Let me see. Let's see what we got going on here. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's got like a, this is actually not spicy. This is actually the Caribbean. That was the spicy. So that's why I tasted, um, kind of had a hint of heat on that. This is the Caribbean. It's got like a slight sweet taste to it. Mm, still good. Okay. And this is, is the original. Mm, Let's try the original out. Hmm. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's kind of kind of close to the Caribbean almost, the original. It still has like a sweet, kind of like a sweet taste to it. You tell me what you think. What do you think? What do you, which one are we talking about first? So I don't know which one I'm biting into. Well, you're gonna probably have to bite it to find out. No, I had shit up on my excuse me, I had shit up on my on my plate. Okay. Okay. So which one is that? This is the original. What do you think? I like it. It's got a nice it's a nice taste to it. it, it it's not overwhelming. It doesn't, doesn't take away from the, the the whole I guess the whole meat. Uh, the whole meat, what do you mean? You know, sometimes 
the sauce can weigh too heavy. You gotta be careful when you use the word meat like that. Right. Come on. You know, but sometimes you know the, the sauce can can overwhelm the meat. So it's like basically you just taste the nothing but sauce. Mm -hmm. it doesn't you know it doesn't kind of merge very well. I think it's a uh, it's a good sauce. I like the base on it. Um, it's definitely good flavor. That's the which one is that? Just the original. Okay. Just the original. So now. I'll do the Caribbean. See what we're working with. I like the Caribbean. Feels like the island. Mm -hmm. Feels like you're at the islands. You know. Sitting back with you see palm trees and I like that. My sand, side. blue water, Bob Marley, Jamie. margarita, Jamie by Bob Marley. Uh oh, here we go. Yeah, that's it. Oh yeah. It feels now we're in the Caribbean. Yeah, it feels exactly like we're in the Caribbean. This is good. So so far, Shane, you got two for two for me. I think three for three for everybody else. Three out of three, Shane, for me. Now it's hot. I like it. That yeah. hot, it tastes really good on some boneless chicken thighs, man. Really. Boneless. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I have to agree with uh, with Cece on this. It's got a very, it's, it's, it's spicy, but it's not overwhelmingly like jalapeno, like fire peppers. It's, it's a nice sweet base to it, but it's got that kick to it. So, you know, go, no, go ahead. No, I'm going to go with, I'm, I'm, I'm three for three on these. I, I definitely would. But use all of these. It's good sauce. It's good sauce. Now I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about it. You talking about the hot? Should have got some shrimp and threw that hot on some shrimp. You know, thinking about it now. See what that flavor. You know, see how it mingles with the seafood. Or maybe according, some fish. According to the Twisted Pig, you can put this on anything. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. No, I don't. Hey. That's what I heard. We starting small, simple. So, once we go global with our twisted pig sauce, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> mm. But definitely, Shane, you got something here. You got something here. Hey, man. Good. Kudos, big homie. Kudos. I tell you what. Yeah. All right, so once again, taste test is complete. Excuse me, I'm gonna say that again. Yeah. Once again, the taste test <laughs> is complete. I think everyone is in agreement. You did a good job. And uh, fingers are greasy, mouth greasy. Fingers, that's finger licking. Too, baby. It's time we do barbecue. Look there. Now lick the fingers. Yeah, that's how you do it. Definitely gotta thank our, our special guest, Mr. Kelvin Simpson. Mr. Elvin Foxworth for helping us out with this taste test. There ain't nothing without some outside interest. You know how we do it. Everybody think that we always making up stuff sometimes. You know how it is, you know. You making up nothing? Yeah, we always like to make sure that we got that outside. It's no fun if the homies can't have none. Uh, <laughs> All right, we are.